Let us begin with the Walken ITSM Agent Portal demo. Log into the instance with the provided credentials. Once logged in, Ticket Views appears. The users can personalize the view that appears when they log in. The view created can be shared with the team, cloned, and edited. The created view can be made as a default view to be displayed in various scenarios. Multiple filters can be added to simplify the view of the tickets. By default, only the active cases would be displayed. To view, the closed cases select the closed condition explicitly. Now let us go ahead and create a ticket. Select the ticket type you're creating. Fill in the necessary fields to create the ticket. Based on the selected ticket type the fields to be filled appear. Watchers can be added to the ticket to view the progress and updates on the ticket. The case deflection component enables text-based article searching for users and provides articles that are relevant. During the ticket creation process, based on the provided subject, the article list is displayed. If the customer is not satisfied with the provided list of solutions, he can go ahead and raise a request. Once the ticket is created, the ticket summary page appears. The ticket can be assigned to an agent belonging to the team the ticket is assigned to. Once assigned, the status of the ticket changes from open unassigned to open assigned. Status of the ticket changes according to the ticket lifecycle. The agents can search for articles under the KB search menu in the ticket summary page. The agent can view or add in the attachments related to the ticket in the attachment tab. If the incident is of priority P1 or has a threat of more than 10 child tickets, then the incident is said to be a major incident, which is assigned to the major incident management group. The MIM group has the privilege to promote or demote an incident. When promoted, an incident alert is created. The CMDB tab provides all the configuration items mapped to the ticket. A task is created within the ticket for efficiently dividing the requirements. If other teams are to be involved in resolving the ticket, fill in the necessary fields in the team to which the task is assigned to. The ticket can be closed only if all the tasks in the ticket are closed. Internal notes are the notes that are only displayed to the internal members, but not to the end users. The ticket timeline provides the time the ticket spends in each stage of the ticket lifecycle. The KB articles mapped or linked to the ticket can be viewed in the Knowledge tab. Coming to the related records, we can view the parent-related tickets and the child-related tickets mapped to the incident. The child-related records are the tickets that are similar to the raised incident. Until the parent ticket is closed, the child tickets cannot be closed. SLA tab provides the complete SLA details and history of the ticket. We can view the information of when the SLA was started, paused or ended based on which the SLA status also changes. If the ticket is in a resolve state or put on hold, the SLA will be paused. If the ticket is cancelled, then the SLA is cancelled as well. If the ticket is closed, then the SLA status changes to completed. Response time breach is calculated based on the respond by field present in the ticket summary. If the ticket is not responded within the scheduled time, then the response breach status changes to true. The SLA team history provides the complete information of the ticket. It can be to which team the ticket was assigned to, and if there is any change in the team what is the status of SLA etc. The email notifications provide the list of all the outbound emails sent to the agents or the end users related to the incident. Once the ticket is closed, a survey is sent to the customer for their review on the solution provided to the ticket. The CSAT survey includes multiple questions to test customer satisfaction for the resolved tickets. Unified history enables you to view the complete summary of the ticket. The modifications are done, the tasks assigned etc. The enhanced version includes several filters that make viewing the ticket history easier. The notes, that is, the communication between the external user and the agent, can be done in the notes section. The resolution information is to be added for the ticket to be closed. Unless and until the resolution information is provided the ticket cannot be closed. Now let us go ahead and explore the process of service request management. The service request is referred to as an official request from the user for the provision of any request the organization caters. Let us go ahead and create an SR to view its approval processes. Items are the list of SR forms present. Based on the selected item, the flex fields are to be filled. An agent is assigned to the raised request. The agent can communicate with the customer for any queries related to the SR raised. There are multiple forms with multiple fields, and special instructions are provided for each form. The approval flow is triggered once the service request is raised. The agent provisions the user's service request. Once the requested service has been provisioned, the service request will be closed. Now, let us go ahead and view the process of submitting a change request. Normal change requests are changes that are to be pre-approved by the Change Advisory Board. For example, performance enhancements are not repeatable changes but are also not emergencies. 
Once the change request is created, the workflow is triggered. Normal change requests undergo three levels of approval, which include technical approval, TRM approval, and verification approval. The color of the workflow step changes to green once the step is completed. Tasks are created for the respective team based on the workflow steps. Once the tasks are closed, the final step of the workflow can be completed. The list of approvals completed can be seen in the Approvals tab. Standard change requests are pre-planned step-by-step changes that are implemented frequently. Once the request is created, the workflow is triggered. The workflow includes assigning the change request, scheduling the timeline for implementing the change, and finally implementing the scheduled change. An emergency change request is a request that can be implemented as soon as possible. This change is of higher priority and hence requires approval by the Change Advisory Board. The workflow includes the CAB approval once the change request is assigned to an agent. Once approved, the change is implemented as soon as possible. Problem management entails locating and resolving incidents, identifying and comprehending the underlying causes of an incident, and determining the best method to eliminate that root cause. Fill in the necessary fields and click Submit to create a problem ticket. Once the request is created, the workflow is triggered. The workflow includes the analysis of the root cause of the problem request raised and getting approval for the analyzed root cause. Once approved, the actions to be taken are analyzed, approved, and implemented. Now that we have explored the modules of ITSM, request a demo to learn more about the modules present in the Walken product. Get in touch, we are always happy to help you.